branch does is charitable and our main beneficiary is um, our children in South Africa that are being br uh, brought up in the townships around Johannesburg without you know with terrible um, amenities and facilities and so we're committed to giving them the best possible chance to actually grow up as healthy and productive adults um, and just to give you an illustration of that in the last uh, year or last two years we've vaccinated over 15,000 children in one township where uh, fully vaccinated not against Covid but against all the other childhood illnesses and that was at a time when the Ministry of Health said all the children in this community are vaccinated it was rubbish they weren't and um, you know so you have to separate sometimes what the politicians tell you from the reality we, we know that here as well sorry Boris didn't mean any offense okay um, so anyway we, what we will do is feature some of some of uh, South Africa and what we're doing there and actually we've got a wonderful interview in the next uh, TV program uh, which uh, is actually from our director in the city in the township of Monsieville old the oldest undeveloped township in South Africa uh, so uh, you know hopefully you look at that as I say you'll get the uh, the website will be is on that card there it's easy to access that also on that website are all <coughs> all the plants and the other products that we sell they're all there you can order online free local delivery within 15 miles of, of Chesham so as I say thank you for coming what we're looking at this morning is um, Agapanthus and uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about Agapanthus and then do a demonstration um, because I know a lot, of, a lot of people struggle with Agapanthus but actually Agapanthus should be a very straightforward plant to care for and so people are perplexed you know they hear oh this is very straightforward and then they find that they don't get enough flowers on it or it starts to die back in the winter or you know all sorts of things so we're going to deal with that at the moment and I am aware here you know, I'm not an expert, I'm not a horticultural professional, but I have quite a lot of experience with Agapanthus as a, as a gardener. We've got quite a number of different specimens around. There are one or two people, and there's one on the back here who I know has a, a huge knowledge of Agapanthus. Isn't that right, Hilary? Um, so if you've got any questions, ask the lady on the back row here. <laughs> now, first of all, Agapanthus, you probably know, or maybe you don't, that it's actually, some, some people call it uh, the lily of the Nile. It does not come from the Nile or in that region at all. Um, there are all sorts of other names for it. Um, the best name for it is flower of love because the word agapanthus is taken from the Greek word uh, agape, which means love, and uh, panthus, which is plant. So agapanthus, put them together. This is the flower of love. Uh, it's a flower that likes to love and it keeps giving back love to, the, to those that own it if they treat it right. It's like anybody, isn't it? It's just like us. You know, if you're ill-treated all the time, you don't give so much love back. But um, we're, we're going to talk about how to, how to treat agapanthus and make them feel really special and they are going to give back to you in abundance. Now, just again, a little bit of little bit of history in South Africa. I spent have spent over the last fifteen years a lot of time in South Africa, and we love South African plants. And there's quite a number that we have here, and more more coming. Um, but uh, in South Africa, this plant is actually not known as a plant to give beauty. It's a herbal plant. It's a plant, uh, a, me a medicine plant. Uh, and actually, that's the ca that's the case with an awful lot of plants within you know in South Africa. They're you know they they they, they have learned over the centuries that there's certain qualities, certain certain things within those plants that help them with different ailments. Um, and um, so, what I've done here, I've taken a few little roots, these fibrous roots from the agapanthus that you see here, and I'm going to crush them down into a paste. There we go. That's not finely ground, but it's enough to, there's a little paste there. Now, would anybody like to try this? <laughs> I should tell you before you do, that there's an, we have to declare a sort of a disclaimer here. If it kills you, then blame, blame the Zulus, all right? Um, but, you know, it's actually a plant which is given to the Koso people in South Africa uh, at, their at, the, uh, at their wedding uh, 
first of all. Actually, what they do is take the roots in, this is in the villages, in the traditional Corso areas, not so much in the cities. They plait them into a, um, into a necklace and they put it round the neck or on the head of the bride to give her, uh, you know, every chance of having, you know, a great family, growing a good family. So what we have here is actually a fertility drug. Anybody? Any takers? All right, well, see me afterwards. <laughs> well, you never know. It could be a miracle worker. <laughs> right, Agapensis, I'm going to blow a couple of myths here uh, for you. There is a myth, and I have to confess here, uh, I have actually promoted this myth in the past until I knew better really started looking into this and studying uh, Agapanthus in more detail the myth is that they love being uh, constricted in a pot root bound you know so they get really very solid roots there's some that you see actually in the display here that will need to be repotted at some point because they are too constricted but some people say and you know it's very commonly found in fact sue my wife over here and i were in cornwall uh, a couple of weeks ago and we went to a very reputable plant center and we bought i found a species there called panache that i haven't got in my collection decided to to buy it rather more expensive than most of that we've got here i have to say um and uh, uh and as we took it to the till the lady there who owned this garden center she said you must have them construct constricted so put it in a pot but it needs, needs to be root bound now that is actually not true for most plants for most for most uh, agapanthus um it, it, there is a time when they are fairly small when it, it's healthy it's, it's helpful not to have too much soil around because otherwise they do put too much energy into developing a root ball and you don't see anything above ground uh, and uh, you know so actually they do need to be constricted when they're young but when they get older they need space like us I guess isn't it? You need a little bit more space when you're older, you know, to have your own your own space and be able to relax. And um, with Agapanthus, they love to be in a pot, not a huge pot, with loads of soil, but they need to have soil in there so that they can take the nutrients out of the soil and uh, and become healthy. And, uh, you know, I would say, because otherwise they, they're not feeding on anything. You know, you can put water in, but Agapanthus is not an orchid. It doesn't take its moisture out of the, out of the air. Or, you know, it, the, these roots need to get into the soil and actually draw their nutrients from the soil. While I'm on that, let me just say that uh, I've had a few questions here from people asking, well, what type of, how do you feed them? What should you feed them with? First of all, miracle grow? No. Uh, those ge general purpose, uh, what they call balanced fertilizers, are not are not good for agapanthus. They need plenty of potash and various other things that you find. Actually, the easiest way to to, to find uh, the way to feed them is tomato, um, not tomato ketchup. <laughs> no, the other stuff, tomato feed. That's the stuff, tomato feed. So they love tomato feed, and that gets now. You know, at this time of year they would benefit from a little feeding of tomato uh, uh, feed probably every week or certainly every two weeks because they're now you know, really coming to, into bloom and that will really help them to give a long lasting display and actually to establish their roots even stronger. But of course they do need to have that root space and otherwise you're starving the plant. And what commonly happens is people will have a plant. I've got a specimen here. Here is a plant that is a healthy plant the leaf is good uh, this is an evergreen so uh, you know and um, but but it's in good it's in good condition um, but no flowers why no flowers well it's a bit like you know I'm a member of the church up here and we've got a lovely choir Have we got any choir members here no I don't think we have actually they're singing up there at the moment they've got an event it's a bit like asking our choir to sing beautiful songs to sing like a lark on an empty stomach you know you can't do it you want your agapanthus to thrive so they need the space to do that so how how do you actually provide the best environment for them what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take this actually here's the challenge to you got you, this is your challenge back to me right I'm gonna work with this plant now 
and I'm going to chop it. I'm going to be fairly brutal with it. Um, I know some people that use a chainsaw for, for, bre for breaking uh, agapanthus apart because under here, you know, they get quite a heavy root ball. And some people use a chainsaw and go straight through. Oh, there's a big sort of like a woodman's saw. I'm going to use a, a spade to do it and it's fairly brutal, but it's kind to the, to the, to the plant. And he, the challenge is I'm going to make two plants out of this. I'm going to pot one on now. I'm going to break one of our own rules in potting it on now because ideally you should leave them aside for about three days uh, to dry out that root ball because if there's moisture in there sometimes that can attract fungus and things which can get into the into the wounds that you've made through cutting the plant. So actually cut them, leave them to one side. So for the sake of the demonstration I'm going to pot, pot half of this back here, show you what to do there, but then when I get it back up to our uh, nursery in King's Ash. I'm going to take it out again, put it to one side and give it a chance. The other half we'll leave out in the sun here uh, and, and it, it will respond well because then it scabs over, you know, creates a, a scab over the, the wounds and then stops uh, uh, fungus and other uh, nasties getting into the, into the system. Um, so the challenge is I'm going to do this. You're going to call me up or send me an email emails there in uh, in next year early next year and say how are those plants doing and then we'll follow their progress in fact we'll put it onto the website there there we are you can go onto the website have a look at it there and we'll show show the progress if next year we get no pl flowers off these agap off this this agapanthus which will be two then you know that i'm a fraud <laughs> and don't come to any more of my talks okay um but that, so there's there's your challenge to me but what we're going to do now no good thank you very much very good uh, very good point there if they are in flower leave them to flower even if the flowers are looking a little bit weak leave them leave them to flower okay um, but then so the best time and I, this is not the ideal time with this one it doesn't matter because there's nothing there it needs treatment um, but ideally we would do this at the end of September when the flowers have died back uh, early part of the autumn and um, you know as I say leave it then for two days three days something like that and then pop them on uh, giving them uh, a bit of space I, I tell you what I'll do before we cut this I'm going to mix the compost now I've got a general purpose compost just to say this is not peat free and I'm covered in shame for saying that because it ought to be peat free but even the RHS recognise that actually peat free is not consistent and quali the quality is not there to go 100% peat free yet. We're working with everybody within the sector to try and get a really good peat free com co uh, compost but at the moment this is, this is a mix. Um, so I'm going to take few scoops of this anybody know what about what we need next no guesses grit one thing or perlite yeah one thing that agapanthus really hates is to have its roots sat in water or soggy boggy soil and um, when it comes to winter so you about need really equal quantities of grit uh, of grit and, and compost mix it all up thoroughly you'll find all the agapanthus that we're selling here have got this mixture and you'll see the, the grit there that means that it can drain very well um, and before we chop this I'm going to put that down there before we chop it, chop it just one thing to say about winterizing your agapanthus this one and this one here these two at the back they're both um, evergreen and they have a, they're a resistance to frost down to about minus five which is not tremendous because we often get it down below that do you remember that time in Chesham we were on the news for being the coldest place in Britain minus 19.6 that was the day I got on a plane and went to South Africa and got out the other end and it was plus 38 degrees. That was quite a contrast. So we can get those colder, colder days here. And um, uh, so uh, 
if you if you've got uh, plants that um, are evergreen like this a lot of them are deciduous they actually die back in the winter they've got a frost resistance down to about minus 15 uh, 10 to 15 something like that we always advise people if you're putting agapanthus in the open garden put a mulch over the top of them a fairly thick mulch over the top to protect them whether evergreen or not I overwintered several uh, um, uh, evergreens in my garden last year they th survived and have thrived that's fine but a very heavy and actually I put a fleece around the evergreen ones uh, the deciduous ones I just left them with the mulch on the top that protects the crown from the worst of the frosts um, the other th th now people say oh, but you know I've done all that and they still died off and more often than not that is because the root though they've thrived in the summer when there's not so much rain like this uh, but so sometimes uh, you know in the winter time you put them in a piece uh, some ground which is perfectly good for them in the in the summer but in winter time further down it gets very wet particularly around here a lot of clay and the, so the water can't escape anywhere so uh, you know that is a bit of a bit of a problem this that you end up with a plant uh, with, with its roots down into this wet soggy stuff that will kill far more plants than frost unless we get a really another if we get another minus 19 then that's different okay so now for the for the dramatic bit where's my spade okay here is the uh, Here's the agapanthus. We first of all got to get it out of the pot. A word on pots. This one is ideal. Uh, one, it's plastic. Although I much say, I have to say I much prefer ceramic pots. But the shape of this is ideal because it's like a funnel shape. Uh, sometimes we make a mistake and we put them into a pot like I don't know whether you can see this green one here which is a nice round pot beautiful pot that plant is fine but actually you never get the agapanthus out of that it won't come out so when you need to split it you're probably going to lose what is what 35 pound pot uh, so you know we, we try to encourage people put them in funnel shot pots we've got some over there actually that are terracotta uh, I think they're uh, 12 pounds and 1550 for the really big ones on Wednesday Annette my colleague over here we went to Wisley and we saw exactly the same pot for exactly double so bargains here today all right so with this one turn it upside down give it a good bash on the bottom and if you're lucky Aha, you see? There we are. Now this one is root bound. Not as root bound as some, I have to say. We, I've, we've seen many of them that are far worse than this because at least this does have some a little bit of soil in the plant. So this, you know, is not the worst case. But that, that's, that's how they go. Um, another, actually, while I'm doing this, another myth about agapanthus, you know better than that because you've just seen that. One of the myths is that agapanthus grow in bulbs. Sometimes people call us up and say, have you got any agapanthus bulbs? It's not a bulb plant, okay? It has these thick, it's like a tuber with these thick uh, tuberous uh, um, roots. And we're going to try and find a place in the middle here because there's a couple of growing heads and I'm going to go right in the middle there. You don't have to be too precious about this and it's hard isn't it when you've had a plant that's given you so much joy and all of a sudden you're going to chop it in half There we go. Now, you could say to me, well, look, this is not totally root bound, still lots of soil in there, but this is spent, completely spent. And because it's so packed around the outside, you know, even when you feed it, it goes out, drains away, doesn't really get back into this. So this is spent soil, but we can't do anything about that. I'm not going to ask you to tease out the, uh, the uh, uh, roots because we don't want to disturb them any more than we have to. But what you have now and why I 
I'm pained by doing this talk, I have to say, because I would much rather, when you want your new Agapanthus, that you come back to us and buy them. <laughs> so, this is a, if you like, a sort of trade thing that we do. There's another benefit to doing it like this. Some people grow uh, Agapanthus from seed, and that's perfectly you know perfectly good to do that i've done it myself be careful how we get our seed but if you've got uh, a number of agapanthus in a garden you pick your seeds you can grow them first of all you need patience they'll probably take three four years before they actually get to the point where they show flowers um so you need patience secondly you'll be surprised you've got a lovely dark blue agapanthus you take its seeds you sow them Eventually you wait four years in full expectation, then the, the flowers pop up and they're sort of a, a light blue uh, or, you know, completely different. And that's because the bees are doing their job and they're cross-pollinating. And so you're getting different, you know, you're actually creating your own hybrid. It's one of the reasons why it's so hard. Somebody, I don't know whether the lady is still here, somebody asked me, for a particular agapanthus over there a few a little while ago and I said no we haven't got it the problem is that there are over 600 recognized cultivars um, uh, and um, uh, 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 within six, the six species and then you know and then other uh, other plants growing from that there are over 600 that are recognized by the RHS but there are thousands more that have just naturally occurred and so don't that's not a problem because it's still going to be a beautiful plant and you might you know you can really enjoy it um so with when you cut them like this you can guarantee that next time when this these two grow they're going to give us exactly the same flower as the one that we had before okay so this is the most accurate way of actually propagating them for the ordinary gardener if you're a specialized horticulturalist you can do a sort of micro um, uh, 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 cultivation which means taking little tiny growing points from the roots here and they grow thousands from a plant like this in hot houses you grow you buy them they look great they might not survive too well in your conditions because they've been grown in perfect conditions so this is a way of making really strong plants so what we would do and I haven't got any pieces here I would put some bits of old pot in the bottom to encourage the drainage so imagine we're doing that dunk dunk right now some compost into there this remember it's going to be kept aside for three days to let it heal up here and then we pack it around with the compost like this really push it down right round the roots and I won't bore you by do completing that um, I should have one that here's one we did earlier right okay it'll be complete but basically pack them in there make sure the top is covered push it really down nicely that then gives the plant lots of room to grow lots of, gr of opportunity to flourish one more thing that you need to do having done the potting on anybody thank you yeah good old dunking forget for a moment just for today forget what I said about them hating to sit in water actually they want that water you know once they get back into the pot they want water for a for a day or two or actually for a, for a week keep it watered keep it really well watered don't let it dry out and then and the promise will be revealed to you if you visit the website over the next few months you're going to get two for the price of one they're going to start flowering in abundance and um, you know again when when if we get to the point where the flowering starts to drop off a bit not not quite so much have a look at the roots because very often it will be that they're root bound so i hope that is helpful to you i hope that you trust me here because believe me root bound is only good for very small plants when they're when you're trying to encourage them to grow upwards as well as outwards not for general plants so but it is something that is you know, promoted widely within the sector. But if you read any of the specialists 
on Agapanthus growing. There's one or two Dutch growers that are really spent a lifetime and there's a, um, a, a couple in Yorkshire also that have done similarly, they've written books on this. They all say the same thing, no, they need to be fed. So here's the way to do it. So I think that's all we've got time for right now. Thank you for listening. If you've got any questions, you can call those out or you can come and see me. I'll be hanging around here for a couple of hours. So thank you for being our guest. Thank you.